Welcome back. Let's get into the video. What's up guys, Zach here with Dr. Eyeball MD. It's good to see you again. It's been a hot minute since we've made a video, quite a few months, but we're jumping right back into it. As some of you may know, I started a new job, moved out to South Dakota, and very busy operating as a surgeon in oculoplastic surgery. So that's been a bit of a transition. It's taken some of my time, but as we get settled in, I'm gonna try to start making some more videos. But in today's video, what I wanna go over are eight things that I learned over the past decade of medical education that aren't really the traditional things that you learn in medical education, just kind of the soft skills, but probably the more important skills that I was able to pick up along the way I wanna share with you guys so you can be on the lookout for them too if you're going through your medical journey. And these are in no particular order, but number one is less is more. And what I mean by less is more is that actually subspecializing allows you to do even more. So for me, I was a little bit worried just going into ophthalmology in general that it would kind of limit what I was able to do. I didn't get to do all the rest of medicine, the other side of medicine. And you know, I quickly got over that once I got in ophthalmology. And then when I went into oculoplastic surgery, I kind of worried, oh, I'm giving up the rest of ophthalmology and cataract surgery. And then I kind of got over that. And so I came to realize that just the the more you subspecialize, the more you really focus on something, it kind of acts as a hourglass type shape to your life trajectory. You really focus down and develop and hone a very specific skill and then it opens up a much broader pathway for you because you have a very unique skill that not a lot of people have and so it opens avenues and paths and things that you might not otherwise have gotten had you been a little more generalized and not subspecialized. So that's something I didn't expect, but it worked out nicely. Number two is that moving your way up kind of the ladder in medicine and even like academic medicine and even in private, you know, outpatient, you know, non-academic medicine is far less about merit than I thought it would be. It's definitely part of it. You really do have to be good at what you're doing, but there's such this other component to kind of moving up in really anything, but I think it applies to medicine too. And that's just, a lot of it is really just interpersonal relationships that you have with other people around you. You know, at least when I was younger, I thought, I kind of thought all of the progress that I'll make in life and the way that you move up in life and kind of will really be merit-based. And that feels like how it should be but it's not entirely how it is. And that's something I didn't know. And so, and I think really it just comes down to relationships are really the biggest driver and kind of your trajectory and your career and probably your life in general. Number three is probably the single most valuable lesson that I learned over the last decade in medical education is that giving is probably the most important thing. And if you can prioritize giving without expecting something in return, life and the universe just have a way of kind of handing you the rest. So if you can really focus on that, there's a great book about this called The Go-Giver. It's one of my favorite books. Um, I'll link it down below if I remember, uh, but this is what it looks like. But if you can actually focus on giving as your primary goal, the rest falls into place. The money, the career options, you know, all the good stuff that you want to happen will happen if you don't prioritize those things. It's kind of the old cliche of, you know, a, a watched pot never boils. So you can't be doing something for the end and of itself, the end not necessarily justifying the means. Sometimes the means just justifying the means. And so doing things for the sake of doing them and giving for the sake of giving. Uh, and then the rest seems to fall into place. That's been a big one. An example of that, I think, is me just getting into oculoplastic surgery in general. While I was an ophthalmology resident, I kind of tried to help my mentor that I was working with kind of develop a product. Uh, and it was really just a giving mentality and a giving mindset. I wasn't expecting anything in return. I wasn't gonna go into oculoplastic surgery, but ultimately I think that kind of prompted that life trajectory. So it's funny the way life has a way of kind of guiding you if you're just in that giving mentality and that giving mindset. Number four is that very small little things are probably going to shape and change the trajectory of your life path, whether that's in medicine or another career or just in general. And while it's great to have a plan, you really have to be pretty loose with the plan. It's good to have kind of that North Star, that guiding Polaris, but you have to be a little bit flexible in how you kind of go in that general direction. That was something that I came to realize that these little interactions or these little one-off things would really kind of just shape the whole trajectory uh, of my path 
one was just having kind of a happenstance phone call with somebody that kind of propelled me into the current job that I'm in. You know, another was just an offhanded text one weekend that kind of ultimately sent me on a path down pursuing oculoplastic surgery. Another was just kind of this overnight camping trip I was on with my dad one time where we talked about whether I want to go into ophthalmology or oral maxillofacial surgery. These one little small instances really can just be like inflection points uh, in your life path. And it's good to be receptive to it and not be too strict and really trying to just stay on this very well-defined life path or this place you see yourself going. It's good to have a guiding star, but be flexible in how you get there. Flexibility is the key, I think, and that took me a while to learn. Number five is learn a trade. And even in medicine, and I feel like this applies, having a trade, having a tangible skill that you can offer is so huge. So for me, that's what I wanted out of ophthalmology and oculoplastic surgery. I wanted to be able to sit down and do this thing with my hands that other people maybe couldn't do. And in that way, have a valuable skill set to offer society society and mankind. Uh, and so I really think there's a lot of importance to getting and having a trade, even within medicine. You know, just kind of the act of becoming a doctor, even if you're not in a surgical specialty, is in and of itself a trade. That knowledge base and that ability to reason clinically is your trade. Uh, but for me, I want to take it one step further and have the physical trade because I'm very physical and like to do stuff with my hands. Whatever you're doing, even if it's not within medicine, go find something that you can do that not everyone else can do. Find that trade and that helps you kind of niche out a place in the market and in society unless you give something back. Number six is that medical training is pretty hard and a lot of times the only thing that really makes it tolerable when you're kind of in those low lows of medical training, whether it's your first year in residency or your intern year or kind of really grinding through some of those, you know, third year medicine rotations is having good friends around and good people. So this is something I didn't really pursue in medical school so much. I was so focused on trying to just do the academic side of medicine. I didn't, I didn't really settle aside a lot of time to like make a lot of good friends and so I kind of regretted that but residency really pushed me so hard and it was like such a breaking kind of a spirit breaking experience sometimes uh, that it forces you to fall back and rely on uh, the people you're around because you're really going through something pretty tough and it builds a very close bond with the people that you're with that's kind of the sixth thing is that friends are what make it tolerable and really worthwhile none of it really matters outside of kind of interpersonal relationships and whatever you're doing whether it's going through medical training or just in your day-to-day -day job or life in general I think number seven is it is a very small world. The amount of times I just run into people that know somebody that knows somebody or I see somebody that kind of recognizes me from the YouTube videos or it's so-and-so's family member or they work with this person. Ophthalmology especially is a very small world. You see these people over and over again. Medicine is just in general a small world and your subspecialty will be a small world. You'll see these people over and over. So all this to say, be nice, be kind, be polite. Can't go wrong with these, these things, but just remember it is a small world. And number eight, is that people will get you a lot further than you are gonna make it yourself. I was very much more introverted when I was a little bit younger and in medical school and kind of like, I can do this by myself, I don't need other people. And it really took until kind of getting into residency and learning to rely on other people, smarter people and mentors, having a mentor and then letting them get you up to kind of a certain area. And then at some point getting another mentor and it's kind of this stepwise approach, you know. Mentors, I feel like are almost like can be chapters in your life so they can help you get to another level. And while they may May remain your friend or your you know a good you know person that you kind of believe in and still reach out to it doesn't mean that they're gonna be your mentor forever so they can help get you to the next level but then it's good to kind of have have another mentor that gets you to the next level and it's not that you're using people to kind of climb some ladder it's really just that you're having people at certain levels help you kind of get to where you need to be next and then you kind of build this tribe of mentors uh, to borrow Tim Ferriss's book title uh, that really can kind of just serve as your your circle and help you kind of live in this new world world. And so it took me a while to realize that you will go a lot further if you kind of rely on other people and ask for help and let them help you and not try to do everything on your own. I joined a practice in South Dakota because, you know, really just what I wanted was a good group of honorable people trying to do the right thing and caring about what they're doing and, you know, having a good culture. And so if you can just kind of keep finding these people and these groups that embody these these ideals and these strong ethics, then I think you're just going to keep kind of developing as a person, becoming wiser and really growing, not in, just in your career, not just in medicine, but as a person. These are some of the soft skills that I learned after a decade of medical training. It was hard. Uh, it broke me down quite a few times, but I think I, you know, kind of grew not just in knowledge and skill set surgically, but the way that I see the world and that I can recognize a little better now um, and hopefully fit into a little bit better. A lot of it just centers around the golden rule, being a giving person 
person, being a flexible person, uh, and not being too just having the blinders on. Anyways, I hope that's helpful. Be on the lookout if you're in medical training uh, for some of these things in your own life. Maybe that can help you kind of on your own path. If you guys like this video, click all the buttons, the like, subscribes, everything. By the way, guys, if you want me to take you along for day in the life at my new practice, it's very busy and we do a lot of cool stuff. I could do that. Let me know down in the comments. It's good to see you guys again. Sorry for the brief hiatus. Uh, hopefully I can be back with you guys and uh, help you on your journey through medicine. I'll see you in the next one.